for me anyway, I think meditation is a halfway point. Situated past pure thinking. But it's not quite prayer. Somewhere just between those two places. Yeah, I think that's about right. This is how we often picture meditation. Eyes closed, relaxed uh, environment, sitting up straight, legs crossed, focused on our breathing, slowly detaching ourselves from this world, focusing forever inside, inside, until we reach grasp or touch the cosmic mind. This ain't working for me, but I've got another idea about what meditation is. Let's go somewhere else and find out. For me anyway, meditation is a lot like this trail behind me. It leads off kind of over the horizon, if you will, into unknown trails and unknown wilderness, but while it does that, it's still firmly rooted in this ground. Meditation is not something that detaches us from this world, but more fully roots us in it. Let's take a look. You know, all the great saints in the past uh, have talked about Christian meditation in a way that may be surprising to us. I grew up in a church environment where everything was about the next world. In other words, nothing was really about this world. It was all about the sweet by and by and the idea that this world really wasn't all that important. If it was important at all, because the whole goal of this world was to escape it and go on and be with Jesus up in heaven where my grandmother is and great-grandmother. You know, we have this idea that meditation is supposed to uh, take us out of this world, somehow detach us from, uh, I mean, we even call it worldly stuff, right? Um, where in fact, you know, it, in the Christian tradition of meditation, uh, nothing is further from the truth. If your meditation takes you away from this world, you're, you, well, first of all, what good is it? Meditation is supposed to be an immensely practical. It starts with practicality. What is good for you? Um, what is good for uh, not just your soul, but your body as well? So in that way, meditation can be taking a hike, uh, going for a walk, going for a jog. Uh, how many of you have found that sort of, that meditative calm uh, just by doing something physically active and letting your mind kind of focus in on, on only what's important and let go of all the distractions from the day to day? From Evelyn Underhill to Richard Foster to Thomas Merton, uh, all the way back to at least St. Teresa of Avila, that all the great saints of the church have, have said that um, meditation begins right here. Uh, it is about this life. It is about where you are, um, what is around you, and it is all about being practical. In 1941, Evelyn Underhill wrote a wonderful book called Practicing Mysticism. And in this book, she describes uh, mysticism 
and meditation uh, by quoting St. Uh, Teresa uh, of Vila, who's, who essentially says uh, to her pupils uh, that she does not require of them any great apprehension of esoteric dreams or, or any apparitions or, or whatever. Uh, she requires only one thing of her pupils who are attempting to meditate, that they look. She said, look. That's it. That's where it starts. Just look. So in that way, meditation uh, is is very much sensually oriented. It is about your eyes, it, and and that lends itself so wonderfully for a photographer, for a painter, for any of those who are in the visual arts. Um, for a musician, maybe simply listening to the wind or the sound of ruffling leaves. Uh, that sort of paying attention is a form of meditation. It could be for the dancer who contemplates the movements of a bird. Meditation could be for the writer who studies the wrinkles of an old man's face and the years and the stories told inside of those tiny divots and crevices. You know, I think there's a relationship between an artist and meditation, uh, an artist and spirituality. I would often hear people in church say that uh, they're just not creative, that they're um, not inclined towards that sort of thing, that God didn't gift them with, with creativity, you know. And yet they would come to church week after week and pray recite the creed, sing wonderful lofty theological hymns, and practice the sacraments. Everything you do in worship requires an amazing amount of creativity. How else can you comprehend and worship a God who is bigger than your mind can even contain, bigger than the universe can contain. How can you worship that God and not practice creativity? You know, it occurs to me that meditation in many ways is kind of the reverse of Platonism. I suppose you could say that. In as much as meditation starts with something that's real, something that's concrete, something that is practical, something that is hands-on, real in this world, tangible. And then it allows that object to just go out further and further away from itself. And if you stop and think about it, that's so true in photography, and it's true, I believe, in probably most all the arts, if you look at a great photograph, say I take a photograph here of the of the sound in the marsh, as I'm certain I will in just a moment, and I take a picture of it. As soon as I take that picture, the picture is not literally the marsh. If you look up close, it's just a bunch of pixels. If I print it out, it's on a piece of paper. You know, in, in that way, all photographs are essentially fictional. They're not, they are not what they are representing. They are, they are literally nothing more than, you know, colored paper, little pixels, little ink. But in so many ways, that transformation from the literal concrete world to what is fictional is the step in the right direction for the meditator. Because the meditator's goal is the ultimate goal is to transform meditation into a sort of prayer where you are in communion with the living God. And no matter how living this wonderful world is that we are in, we are not Pantheistic people, 
Maybe God is in creation, but creation is simply not God. And while the living world gives representation to that living God, uh, it is representation only. And so meditation, while it starts right here with this literal, beautiful world that God has given us, starts moving somewhere further off, somewhere a little bit deeper. You know, if you're still having trouble with meditation and you're not really sure what it is or how to how to do it, go somewhere. Uh, go somewhere. Uh, go somewhere pretty, and just kind of look around and take in the view. To do as Saint Teresa said, look, and then ask yourself this one simple question what does it mean not what does it mean to me anybody can answer that but what does it mean what does this landscape right here in front of me with the ducks flying off in the distance with the little water pooled up right there with all the little millions of crabs, tiny little crabs living in it, and all this um, marsh, the marsh grass growing around here. What does it mean? If you think it's meaningless, then you're well excused for not believing in God. But if you believe it has a meaning, if it conveys something all on its own, then you have to stop and give glory to God. And that way, meditation starts right here. It starts right in what's in front of you. Asking that one simple question. What does it mean? Thank you.